Hey guys, Andy Tran here with the Inner Bark Outdoors channel. In this video, I wanted to go over a recent purchase that I made, and that is the Tenebrex Weapon Sight Polarizer. This is essentially a little filter on sort of like a lens cap that solves a very specific problem, and that is cutting through reflection and glare on glass. So if you're making observations or engagements through intermediate barriers, this might be something that is worth looking into. Uh, the specific model for this is LSU, and uh, I'm going to go over some of the measurements and also show you some examples of this in use so you can see if it's worth it for you. The packaging doesn't say anything about law enforcement or military only, which is nice because that means all the red tape is removed. A lot of sites that sell this particular item have a restriction on that, and while I do have the credentials to purchase this, I'd rather support a company that plays nice with others. I got this from Hero Optic, and all I had to do was provide payment information. Tenebrex is known for their higher end scope caps. This one is made for my Premier Reticle scope, and this one is made for this Night Force scope right here. They're also well known for making their anti reflection devices, like this particular one, which is screwed on the objective end of the scope. The weapon sight polarizer mounts to the ocular side of the scope, which is nice because you don't have to stack anything in front, which could affect the point of aim point of impact. It also makes it easy for you to rotate the polarizer when it's nice and close to you. The body of the polarizer is a rubber-like material, and it's press fit onto the ocular piece. For my setup, I have this little tiny bump here located about the one o'clock position. This way it stays out of the way when I work the bolt, and it also gives me a full view of my bubble level. When you're not needing the polarizer, you can pop off the lens, flip it over, and this little tiny tab here goes into the bump which is hollowed out. The tether holds everything together so you can fire without any obstructions. To adjust the polarizer, you just rotate the lens in the housing until glare is eliminated or reduced. Then take some measurements to see if this will work on your optics. The part that attaches to your scope is just shy of an inch deep. This is important to know because some scopes have illumination knobs that are on the ocular piece, and this will interfere with the installation. The overall length of this is 1.8 inches, meaning that this device will add 0.8 inches in overall length to your scope. If your rifle isn't set up to fit you very well, or you have a short eye relief, this could end up hurting you. Measuring the inside diameter was a little bit difficult because of the flexible nature of the housing, but it averaged about 1.7 inches in diameter. So I have a couple of the scopes that are listed on the compatibility list, and this Strike Eagle 1-8x24 unfortunately doesn't fit even though it's listed. The ocular is a little bit small, meaning that the polarizer mounts loosely. This of course can be fixed with a little bit of tape, but it's what I would call suboptimal. Another scope listed on the compatibility list is my Premier Heritage Tactical 3-15, and it does have a nice tight fit. But let's go and take a look at some scopes that are still in production. It's hard to tell what scope this is because of the paint, but this is a Night Force NX-8 to 20 by 50 It is 1.7 inches in diameter. The polarizer fits nicely on there, which is nice because this is the rifle that this is going to live on mostly. And here I have an EOTech Voodoo 5-25, and the polarizer fits nice and snug on there, about what we saw on the Premier Heritage scope. Since this rifle scope isn't mounted, let's go ahead and take it outside and see how it looks through it. The polarizer works by darkening reflected light. Since a lot of the light in the sky is actually reflected light, it will darken it quite a bit. This can help reduce eye strain. And here is an image of my patrol car through the windshield. It goes from almost a mirror to burning right through. And here's a few other examples of vehicles that are around me. And here is the residential glass of my home. What I've found is that the light that is more indirect from the sun seems to be darkened or eliminated the most, whereas the almost direct sunlight has a negligible effect.
So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Uh, if you guys have any comments or questions, go ahead and leave a comment below or you can message me direct. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe. And also check out my Facebook page, Instagram, and all the social media. Really helps me know that these are the kind of videos you wanna see. But as always, take care out there, bye.